Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Primrose Path by Bram Stoker. Uh, so obviously he's the author of Dracula, this is his first novel. It was actually originally serialised as well in print before it finally went on to, you know... Well, I think this is actually the first time it's been like published in, in um, pu pr uh, printed form, but yeah... Um, so I'm gonna, as always, I'm gonna read you the blurb, and then we're gonna go through and check out some of my notes, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, the Primrose Path. Jerry O'Sullivan is a Dublin theatrical carpenter. He hankers after life in London and persuades his wife to uproot with their three young children. In London, he falls in with Mephistopheles and a cast of dubious characters, and before long, he and his family are enmeshed in tragedy. Buried treasures. Robert Hamilton seeks the hand of Ellen, but lacks the financial means. He dreams of finding sunken treasure and enlists his friend Tom to help turn dream into reality. But storms are brewing. So I thought this was a great little quote here um, about Stoker himself and his writing. When this anecdote was quoted to Bram Stoker's widow during an interview given in January 1927, she replied, The story you have in mind must have been a much earlier work, but then my husband was always writing horrible stories. When he was at work on Dracula, we were all frightened of him. It was up on a lonely part of the east coast of Scotland, and he seemed to get obsessed by the spirit of the thing. There he would sit for hours, like a great bat, perched on the rocks of the shore, or wander alone up and down the sandhills, thinking it out. And uh, I always appreciate when I know how many words something is as well. Um, I guess it's just the writer in me being curious. But So the Primrose Path is 32,000 words, and Buried Treasure is just under 8,000 words. <laughs> I thought this was just... Quite a dumb little exchange, but it did tickle me. Um, what is this? Oh, Mr Muldoon, said the mother, almost reproachfully. Sure, don't you know this is the new baby? Oh, oh, indeed. It is very bold. It won't be long so, then, interrupted Miss Manaspi pertly. You can make it your heir, if you will. There's a great quote. Um, somebody says, I consider it an impertinence for any man to think that what he says must be interesting to everyone in a room. Here we have a little section here that was actually highlighted at the start of it in the introduction as well. Um, and I think it just goes to show the way that attitudes have changed. Wives, be careful how you argue with your husbands, for you walk on a ridge between two precipices. If you allow a half-formed wish to be the parent of immediate action on your husband's part, without raising a warning voice should you see danger that he does not, then you do him a wrong which will surely recoil on your own head and the heads of your children. But if, on the other hand, you persistently combat with argument wishes which should be furthered or opposed with the patent truths of the heart's experience, then you will surely fail, for you will be fighting reality with vacuity, opposing steel with air-drawn daggers of the fancy. There are some footnotes as well for some of the words to explain them, and I quite like this one. Uh, a kushla, which is uh, Irish slang for darling or sweetheart. And uh, another one of the words that gets highlighted... Uh, Emuet, uh, it's French, a popularizing disturbance or uproar. So yeah, those are pretty much all the tabs that I wanted to highlight. I think both of these stories, they kind of show as early works. I did love that uh, The Primrose Path was originally serialized because I always think that's quite fascinating when um, a, a novel or a book was originally published in serial form. I think they both show as early works because they're both kind of heavy handed with their morality sometimes. Um, you feel as though... Um, like buried treasures, for example, feels very much like um, you know, like a fable or something like that, where there's something for you to learn from it. Whereas the Primrose Path is quite heavy-handed with some of the um, uh, like themes of Christianity and alcohol and things like that, uh, Puritanism and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, overall, both of them were. I mean, they were pretty well written, and uh, I mean, especially the Primrose Path. He was, I think, 27 when he first wrote that, so he's younger than I am, which kind of terrifies me a little bit. But um, yeah, all in all, I did enjoy it. I would probably give this a, what, like 3.75 out of 5. I can't see it being uh, of any particular interest to you unless you're already a Bram Stoker fan. And to be honest, after Dracula, I would probably recommend going for The Lair of the White Worm because I really enjoyed that one. Um, but yeah, this was pretty good as well. And there's like a whole little uh, library of different editions of Bram Stoker uh, books by these like the Desert Island Dracula Library. Promotes the study of Dracula, vampirism, and the works of Bram Stoker. Um, and so, yeah, this, these guys have got, like, all of his back catalogue out, which I think is very cool. So there we have it. That's what I thought of The Primrose Path by Bram Stoker. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.